Yeah, so I grew up in a military family, and that, yeah, hoorah. Um, and that means a lot of moving around and making your siblings your best friends, and your best friends will get you in a lot of trouble. Um, so I was probably around four years old, and we lived in Colleen, Texas. I don't know if anybody knows where Colleen, Texas is, because it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, and we lived on the military base. Um, and from my recollection, military bases were really big and all the properties were really big. I don't think that's true. Um, but when you're four and you're yay big, that's the case. And my older brother is two years older than me. His name is Alec. And we were bored because it's the middle of Texas. And it was the middle of summer and it was hot. Um, and my dad is outside mowing the lawn, and we have been given explicit instruction to never leave the property unless we're accommodated by an adult. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so Alec was like, oh, no, listen, Becky, I've got this great idea. He's six, genius. Six-year-olds six are always geniuses. And he's like, let's go across the street. Across the street is kind of a forested area. To me, in my memory, it's literally a giant forest. It's like the black forest of Germany. And who knows what you're gonna find in there? Little Red Riding Hood, gingerbread houses, I don't know, great, I'm game. So uh, we somehow get across there without my dad seeing, because he's mowing our giant lawn, which is probably not very big. And we get in there, and there's trees, and there's bugs, and there's all these things, and we finally find this little clearing. And Alec has found a very old, a very rusty um, rabbit trap. One of those that like does this. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, mm -mm. <laughs> I don't think so. And he's like, no, let's touch it. And I say, no, I'm good. <laughs> and he's like, no, but listen, we should, I don't wanna know if it works. And I, four-year-old Becky is also a genius, but a better genius. And I'm like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. And he's like, I'm going to do it. And so he takes his hand, not a stick like you might imagine a genius child would actually do. He takes his hand and he's like, yeah. And he puts it into it. Lo and behold, it works. Oh my God. <laughs> Thankfully, there's, there's no blood but lots of tears. Um, and it clamps down real tight on Alec's hand. And he's stuck. And I'm like, ah! I'm thinking my brother has died because his hand is stuck in the trap. Um, he's not dead. He's screaming, very alive. And I book it. And I'm like, I have to save Alec. And I'm running, running, running. Don't know where I am. Um, turns out there's also barbed wire in this little black forest. <laughs> and I'm like, I have to save him. And I get stuck in it. All my clothes get tangled in the barbed wire. And I'm like, no! And something happens. To this day, we still don't know what happened, but the lawnmower stops. My dad doesn't know why. He can't tell us. And it stops. And he's listening, and he hears, ah, help, coming in two little choruses of, from, from the black forest. And he's like, that's weird. But my kids are inside, and so maybe it, uh, and we're, and he finally realizes we aren't at home. And he decides to go out there. And he, I don't even think he runs. I think he walks. And he's just like, OK, these are my genius children, which I have birthed. Well, he hasn't, but he has created in some sense. And um, we are saved. And he somehow gets Alex's hand out of the claw. And to this day, we are no longer allowed to go into the forest alone. Aww.